So now that we can factor out the greatest common factor between some terms in a polynomial, we want to be able to break them down even farther. So again, to factor, what does it mean? To take something and write it as a product. So in all of these examples that we're going to work through, we have addition or addition and subtraction everywhere. Those are our operations. But we want to break those down into multiplication. Two things being multiplied that will produce these same trinomials. So in all of these cases, we have a 1 on the front of our x squared term, or our y squared, depending on whatever variable it is. It could be t. Okay, but there's a 1 on the front. That's what we're going to handle first, and then in the next lesson, we'll look at, well, what if there isn't a 1 on the front? But just to remind you, coming back to our first example here, we've done this a lot. In order to get rid of these parentheses, we have to multiply these together, and we pick a specific order. We FOIL it. The order doesn't matter, but if we stick to the same pattern, we're less likely to make mistakes. So again, recall, FOIL method of multiplying binomials, two-term polynomials together. So we have a specific order. We go to first, so first times first gives us x squared. Outer two, we get 5x. Inner two, 3x. And the last, plus 15. So right off the bat, when we FOIL those together, we have four terms. But we can combine like terms in the middle, and we'll be with a trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 15. So factoring these trinomials is just doing the opposite, going from the bottom to the top instead of from the top down. So we want to take a trinomial and be able to rewrite it as multiplication. So again, how did we get to this trinomial? Well, the first term were the first two being multiplied together. And the last two gave us the term on the end. Okay, then the middle two were the sum of those other two factors. So we want to keep that in mind as we're starting to look at these trinomials. Well, what's our first term? What's our last term? And we use those to figure out, well, how do we get to the middle? So we'll do a bunch of examples and it'll make more sense. So this first one, we've got positive everywhere. So we already know our signs are going to be positive everywhere, but maybe we don't. We'll just attack it like normal. So we need things to multiply to give us 8. We multiply the outer 2, but add to give us 9. So we multiply 5 and 3, we get 15. If we add them together, we get 8. So multiply to the end, add to the middle. So let's just look at the factors of 8. What do we got? 1 and 8. If we just start with the most basic, 1 in itself. If we multiply those, we get positive 8. If we add those, we get 9. So those are the factors that we need. Looking at our first term, there's a 1 out on the front, so we need to break it up into an x and an x. We need 8 and 1. Order doesn't matter. And we need it to multiply and add to be positive. So when we're multiplying two numbers to get a positive, what happens? Either they're both positive or they're both negative. But if we add two negatives together, we get another negative. So we need it to multiply to be positive and add to be positive. So both of these need to be positive. And we can always check once we factored something by doing what? Foiling it back out. So let's just check really quick. From the first, we get x squared. Outer, we get 8x. Inner, we get another x. And last, we get 8. So if we combine our middle two terms together, we've got x squared plus 9x plus 8. Check. That was our original trinomial that we were working with. With the next one, what's different here? We're kind of in a wonky order. We need it in descending order. So the highest power, next highest power, next highest power. So how could we rewrite this? y squared is going to come first. Next highest term, negative 9y, and positive 20. So in this case, what do we need? factors of 20, multiplying to 20, but adding to negative 9. So we could just try to go in order and see if we get there with 1 and 20. Multiply, yes, it'll get there. Adding us, 21 is too big. So that's out. 2, and the next factor would be 10. Okay, multiply, we get to 20. Add, we get to 12. Or if we subtract, we get to 8. But we need 9. So that one's out. 
Not divisible by 3, 4 is the next one, 4 and 5. Multiply to give us 20. If we add, we get 9, which is good, and we'll figure out the signs in a minute. So again, we've got a one out on the front, so we should always break it up into one piece and one piece. Our factors that worked for us were 4 and 5. Order doesn't matter, we could flip those around. And we need it to multiply to be positive, but add to be negative. So to multiply and get a positive, again, we're talking about these two options. And to add and get a negative, it tells us they're both negative, both negative signs. And again, the order doesn't matter. We could flip it around and say y minus 5, y minus 4, still the same thing. Multiplication is commutative. We can change the order. So there's two for you to try. Go ahead and factor these. And with the first one, again, we have a 1 on on the front, so we know it needs to break up into m and m. All right, we need it to multiply to be positive and add to be negative. So it tells us both signs need to be negative. And let's look for the factors of 12. 1 and 12 are too big to get us to 8. 2 and 6, if we multiply those, we get 12. If we add them, we get 8. So again, we've already determined the signs. Both need to be negative. 2 and 6. Order doesn't matter. You could flip those around. It means the same exact thing. So for part B, we have to rewrite the order first. Descending. So t squared minus 11t plus 24. We know that it's going to break up evenly. t squared will break up evenly into t and t. So when we get first, we get that term. And we need it to multiply to be positive and add to be negative. So that tells us two negatives. So 24, how do we want to break that one up? Into things, multiplying to 24, adding to negative 11. Okay, so 1 and 24 is obviously too big. We don't have to write those down. But if you need to be methodical with it and start with 1 and increase, it's not going to hurt anything. Next factors, 2 and 12. If we multiply them, we get to 24. If we add them, we get to 14. If we subtract them, we get to 10. Close, but it doesn't work for our combo. We need negative 11. So next factor, what are we looking at? 3 and 8. Multiply, we get to 24. If we add those, we get to 11. We've already determined the signs. We need them to both be negative. Order doesn't matter. We could flip them around. And again, how could we check all of these like we've done, like we've practiced? Multiply, foil it out, and see that we get back to our original trinomial. So we're just going to keep practicing with a bunch of these. With the next group, in part A, what do you notice about this one? What is our highest power on x that shows up? A 3. And we can't divide up x cubed evenly into two different pieces. So we always want to check, like we learned in the last couple sections, is there anything that we can take out that's common between all of them in the very beginning? Because if we can make the numbers nicer, we want to. So looking between these three terms, is there anything common that they all share? We could take out an x. And when we do that, we're reducing the power of x by 1 in every single term. So now what do we have? Trinomial with the power 2. Taking an x out of x squared, we're left with 1. And x out of negative 30x gets rid of all of them. So now this trinomial looks like something that we've seen. We can factor that. So we have to carry along the x on the outside. It is a part of our answer still. But now we can break down this trinomial. We have a 1 out on the front, so we know it needs to be an x and an x. And then what about our signs? We need it to multiply to be negative and add to be negative. So how do we multiply to get a negative number? They have to be opposites. One is positive and one is negative. And we know since the one in the middle is negative, the bigger number of our factors has to go with the negative. So let's break up 30 and see if we can find the right combo. 1 and 30, too big. They're going to be close together since our coefficient here is a 1. So 1 and 30 isn't going to work. 2 and 15, still too big. 3 and 10, we're getting a little bit closer. But again, that's still out. Not divisible by 4. 5 and 6 are the next. 
So in this case, if we multiply those, we get to 30. And if we add them, we get to 11. But what about our signs? One of them's positive and one of them's negative. So really, we're looking for combos multiplying to negative 30. We'll just take the sign into account. So again, which one needs to be negative? The larger one of the two, so that when we add it, our middle term is negative. So I'm going to show you the wrong version first. If we multiply these together, we do get negative 30. If we add these, though, what do we get? Positive 1, and we want negative 1. So our negative should be on the 6, on the larger term. Negative 6, positive 5. Again, the order doesn't matter with these, but the signs do. 6 has to be negative, 5 has to be positive. Again, we could check it, foil it all out, make sure we get back up to the original. Okay. Next one, is there anything common between all of these that we can take out? Nope. And again, we have a one out on the front. So we know we're going to break up into an x and an x. We need it to multiply to be negative. So that tells me we need one positive and one negative. And the larger one has to be what? Negative. So in 20, looking at our factors, 1 in 20, way too big. 2 in 10, way too big. 4 in 5 will work for us. And again, which one needs to be negative? The larger of the two. So we need negative 5 and positive 4. And we can always check really quick. From the first, we get x squared. Outer minus 5x. Inner plus 4x gives us the negative 1. And then a positive times a negative gives us negative 20. All right, last one that we're going to do together for this round. Anything common that we can take out of all of them? Sure is. There's an x. We reduce all the powers on every term. So now we've got x squared minus 3x minus 54. We know we have a 1 out on the front, so it's going to break up into x and x. And what about my signs? Multiplying to be negative tells me 1 positive, 1 negative, and the larger one needs to be what? negative. So what combo of 54, its factors, negative 54, gets us to negative 3. So we could try a few, but what's going to work for us? 9 and 6 is the right combo, but which one needs to be negative? Which one needs to be positive? The larger one needs to be negative, and the smaller one, positive. So negative 9 and positive 6 will work for us. And again, we can always foil it out and check if you aren't sure. So two for you, give them a try, and we'll run through them when you've had a chance to look at them. So common between all of these terms is an x, but in addition to that, what else can we take out? They're all even, so at least a 2. So if we take 2x out of every single one of these terms, what are you left with? x squared minus... The 2 we've taken out, and we've taken out an x, so we're left with negative x. And negative x out of x goes away. 2 out of 84, we're left with 42. All right, we can still break down this trinomial farther. 2x is a part of our answer. And we need it to multiply to be negative. So we've got a positive and a negative. So what combo of factors of negative 42 will get us to negative 1 when we add them. They have to be close together, and the ones that are close together, 6 and 7. Which one needs to be negative? The larger of the two, negative 7, positive 6. Could always foil the check. All right, next one, common between all of these that we can take out of everything, is a 2, and we're left with a squared minus 10a plus 25. We have a 1 out on the front, so we know a squared is going to break up evenly. And what about our signs? Multiply to be positive, add to be negative. Multiply to get a positive, they're both the same sign. So positive, positive will get us there, but a sum of two positives doesn't turn negative. So we need minus, minus. And what factors of 25 get us to 10? 5 and 5. And they're both negative. 
How else could we write this answer, though? I have this factor, a minus 5, and it shows up how many times in total? 2. So we could say 2 times this quantity squared. Because again, that notation tells me what? This thing times itself 2 times, then multiply by 2. So we, again, we can always FOIL to double check, make sure we factored correctly. Okay, let's do a few more. First problem again, has a 1 out on the front. We can break up x squared evenly into an x and an x. And what about our signs? We need it to multiply to be negative, add to be positive. So to multiply to get a negative, one of them's positive and one of them's negative. But in this case, which one needs to be positive? The bigger of our two factors, so that when we add it, we get 17. So breaking up negative 110 into some factors to try. 1 and 110 is going to be way too big. Any uh, combination positive, negative on either of them won't get us to 17. Next factors, 2 and 55. Again, any combo of positive, negative won't get us to 17. It's still too large. Next one, 5 and 22 will get us there. And again, what combination of positive, negative do we need? The larger one needs to be positive, and the smaller one needs to be negative. So we've got negative 5, positive 22. 22 minus 5 gives us 17. 22 times negative 5 gives us negative 110. We always have a check. All right, the next one. Just handle in like normal. We've got a 1 out on the front, and we can split up x squared evenly. And what's special about the number 7? If we try to break up its factors, what are we looking at? The only options are 1 and itself. So 7 is a prime number. So the only options for our factors are 7 and 1. Now in order to multiply to get a negative, what do we need? A positive and a negative. So in this case, we need a positive and a negative, and the larger one needs to be negative. That's what that thing in the middle tells us. So we think our only combination for factoring this are these two binomials. But if we check to make sure that it actually does factor correctly, what happens? Let's FOIL. x squared from the first, outer we get minus 7x, Inner, we get plus x, and last, we get minus 7. So yes, the first and the last term are correct, but the middle two, those aren't working for us. But that was the only combo that we could try. 1 and 7 are the only factors of 7, since it's prime. And in order to multiply to get a negative, we need a positive and a negative. We could change the order around and try that, but it's still not going to work for us. It's just going to create a positive. 6 on the inside instead of negative. So what about this thing? Can we break it down using these whole numbers? No, it's not possible. So we call these prime polynomials. Okay, when we just have a number that's prime, we can't break it down any farther. Uh, we call it prime. Same thing for a polynomial. If I can't break it down any farther, we call it prime. So we might come across that case, and we just have to exhaust our different options. If none of them work, we can't break it down with the knowledge that we have, so we call them prime. All right, part C looks a little funny, because what's happening? We've got a square term on the front and a square term on the back, and my middle term is a mix of those two. But the middle term basically tells us how to break up the front and the back. So let's just look back at this first example up here. So we had x squared, and we broke it up evenly into an x and an x. And we do that because we need to produce a middle term that just has what involved? A constant and what variable? x just with the power 1. So we need to split up both x squared and y squared. So when we do the outer and the inner, we get combos of x, y. So let's just talk about how would we split up x squared evenly. We've got that one down, an x on the front and an x on the front. The first will get us to x squared. Now the last two will produce this term, 
We'll worry about the constant later, but how should we divvy up y squared evenly into these two pieces? Just like what we did with the x. 1y and 1y. So when we do the last, we'll get y squared. Okay, and let's just check. From the outer, we get xy. From the inner, we get xy. That's what our middle term is working towards. So we can figure out where the variables need to lie. Then we'll take a look at the constants. So negative 48. We're trying to break that up into things that multiply to negative 48 and add to what? Negative 2. So again, to multiply to get a negative, that tells us what about our signs? One's positive and one's negative. The larger one needs to be what? Negative, once we figure out the factors. So let's start with some larger factors, since 2 is pretty small. 4 and 12 will get us to 48, if we multiply those. If we add them, though, do they get us to 2? Any combo of positive and negative doesn't work. Next factors, 6 and 8. Multiply together will give us 48. Some combination will get us to 2, but what do we need? The larger one needs to be what? Negative. So 8 is going to be negative and 6 is going to be positive. And I want us to check this one just to prove to you that we do get the right combo of xy for our middle term. So let's check and foil it out just to make sure we understand what's going on. So from the first, x times x gives us x squared. On the outer, we get negative 8xy. From the inner two, we get positive 6xy. And from the last, we get negative 48y squared. So if we combine our middle two terms together, what do we get? Negative 2xy. So did we get back to our original trinomial? x squared minus 2xy minus 48y squared. We sure did. So sometimes we have to split up both the front and the back variable evenly among our terms. So same story with this one. I've got x to the fourth, but we've only seen x squareds everywhere. Okay, but can I take x to the fourth and divvy it up evenly so that my middle term involves what? x squareds. We sure can. How does that tell me to break up x to the fourth? I need x squared and I need x squared. When we FOIL from the first, what do we get? x to the fourth. Any outer term will involve x squared. Any inner term will involve x squared. That's what we need. So let's figure out the signs. Multiplying to be negative. So that tells me one is positive, one is negative. And what factors of 15? will get us to 2. Well, 5 and 3 will work. And which one needs to be positive? The larger of the two and the smaller, negative. So we've got x squared plus 5 and x squared minus 3. And again, we could FOIL it out just to check. Let's do it real quick. From the first, what do we have? x to the fourth. Outer, we get minus 3x squared inner plus 5x squared, and last minus 15. So we combine those two together, do we get our positive 2x squared, like our middle term suggests? Yeah, we got our original trinomial back out. All right, and with part E, what's different about this one? I don't like that out on the front. It's been positive everywhere else. So how can we get rid of that, or get rid of the problem anyway? not get rid of it entirely. We could factor out a negative out of everything. Take out a negative one and what happens? All of my signs are going to change. So now we've got x squared minus 5x minus 14. So if we have a negative, we can circumvent that problem and just take it out of everything. Okay, just like before if we had a common factor on the last sheet, if there was a 2 among everything that we could take out, we wanted to. Sometimes we have to take out the negative because we want our first term to be positive. So negative 1 is still a part of our answer. Splitting up x squared evenly, 
we'll divvy up into x and x. And we need it to multiply to be negative. So that tells me one's positive, one's negative. What factors of negative 14 get us to negative 5? 7 and 2 will work for us. Which one needs to be negative? The larger of the two. Negative 7, positive 2. All right. So we still have the negative 1 out on the front. We could multiply these together, then negate it all. We get right back up to our original. So on the next page, there are a couple for you to try. All right, the last few examples, let's run through them. In part A, is there anything common that we can take out of all three of those terms? They have a common x, and we'll be left with x squared plus 4x minus 12. We have a 1 out on the front, so we can split up x squared evenly into x and x. It needs to multiply to be negative, so we need one positive, one negative. Factors of 12 that add to 4. 6 and 2 will work for us. And which one needs to be positive? The larger of the two. And we have positive 6, negative 2. Order doesn't matter. We could change those around. We can always multiply to check. With the next one, again, we've got a 1 out on the front and nothing common that we could take out everywhere. We need it to multiply to be negative. So one's positive and one's negative. And we're dealing with the same factors as last time. Looks very similar to this. But instead, we need which one to be negative? The larger, the 6, and positive 2. Positive 2, negative 6. The middle is super important. All right, what's special about part C? We still have a 1 out on the front, so we can break it up into an x and an x. 5 is prime, so our only options are 5 and 1. And we need it to multiply to be negative and add to be positive. So in theory, our larger one would be positive, the smaller one would be negative. But that doesn't produce the middle term that we need. So it doesn't factor with the knowledge that we have, so we call this a prime polynomial. Not working for us, we can't break it down any farther with the knowledge that we have, but we exhausted our options. Part D, again, we have squared term on the front and squared term on the back. So we're going to divide them up evenly. And any combo of outer and inner will give us x, y. So what we're working towards. To multiply to be positive and add to be negative, they both need to be negative. And what factors of 6 will add to 5, 3, and 2. We can always check, foil it out. First, we get x squared outer minus 2xy, inner minus 3xy, which gives us the 5. And then a negative 3 times a negative 2 is positive 6. y times y is y squared. Done. All right, last two. With part E, we have x to the fourth, but we can divide it up evenly into what factors on the front? A squared and a squared. And again, our middle term kind of gives us a hint for how to divvy it up. Like over here, we had to split up the x and the y, so we multiply and get x, y. Same story, but in this case, we need it to multiply to be positive, add to be negative. So that tells me two negatives. Factors of 14 that add to 9, what do we need? 7 and 2. Order doesn't matter, we can flip them around, still get us there. And the F is the hard one, because we have to do a couple steps in order to prime it for factoring. Because it's not in descending order. So we'll take care of that first. So negative x squared would come first. The sign goes with the term. Negative 3x is next and positive 10. So now it's in descending order, but what's on the front of this that we don't like? That negative. So what can we do? I'll just take a negative out of everything and throw it out front. All of the signs are going to change. So we've got x squared, positive 3x, negative 10. Now we can handle it. Negative 1 is still a part of our answer. We can split up x squared evenly. And we need it to multiply to be negative. So that tells me positive, negative. Factors of 10 that add to 3, what are we looking at? In that case, 5 and 2 
5 and 2. And which one needs to be positive? The larger of the two of them. Smaller one needs to be negative. Positive 5, negative 2. And again, how can we always check these if you aren't sure? Foil it back out, make sure we get to the original polynomial.